हेलो गाइज वेलकम बैक टू रैपिड डेंटिस्ट्री एंड वी आर अगेन हियर विद पार्ट टू ऑफ डेवलपमेंटल डिस्टर्बेंसेस एंड इन पार्ट वन वी हैड सीन अबाउट द डिस्टर्बेंसेज ऑफ जॉज लिप्स एंड पैलेट एंड इन पार्ट टू वी आर अगेन हियर विद द डिस्टर्बेंसेज ऑफ ओवरल म्यूकोजा जिंजाइवा एंड टंग सो लेट्स बिगिन द डेवलपमेंटल डिस्टर्बेंसेज ऑफ ओवरल म्यूकोजा सो बेसिकली वी ओनली हैव two disturbances of oral mucosa uh, we have for dysis granules and we have focal epithelial hyperplasia which is also known as hex disease okay so starting with your for dysis granules so what are for dysis granules so these are basically your ectopic sub sebaceous glands so what are ectopic sebaceous glands basically your sebaceous glands are oil or sebum producing glands these are normally present on the skin not present never present in the oral cavity but normally it is never present in the oral cavity but since we have uh, in this disease we have sebaceous glands in the oral cavity these are called ectopic ectopic meaning away from your normal location you know other than any your normal locations that is called as ectopic sebaceous glands and the most common site where these fordyces granules are seen are your buccal mucosa so here your uh, buccal mucosa you see these small small white colored spots which are you know against your molars opposite your molars so this is the most common location and then other than this we also have uh we can also see these uh you know in the retromolar region you know behind the molars so that is the second most common location after your buccal mucosa opposite the molars now if you see the histopath slide of this fordyces granules what you see is your heterotropic sebaceous gland heterotropic meaning again that you know in oral cavity these glands are not to be found but these are found in this particular condition so that is your heterotopic sebaceous glands and you also see this keratin plugging here so these are also seen in your sebaceous glands that is basically your fordyces granules okay now the second condition after the fordyces granules of uh, we have as focal epithelial hyperplasia and this is also known as hex disease i told you right so this condition is particularly caused by your human papilloma virus of low risk type so we have uh, you know uh, uh, different different types of human papilloma viruses and particularly 13 and 32 type of hpv causes this hex disease and these are under your low risk category that is your 6 11 and 13 and 32 number of hpv is low risk hpv and your high risk hpvs are your 16th and 18th number which basically causes your squamous cell uh, carcinomas right and your low risk uh, hpvs causes your uh, hex disease squamous uh, papillomas and all those conditions uh, basically not very uh, like um, high risk conditions okay and now this oral papillary lesions as you can see in this image that you know these are some uh, cauliflower like growths these are very contagious this lesion is the most contagious oral papillary lesion right that it is it can easily easily be transmitted it is very contagious and the appearance you see here is you know some round round structures adjacent to each other so this appearance is called as cobblestone or fissured appearance okay and the most common site you see this hex disease is your tongue on the tongue it is most commonly seen and then after tongue we have oral mucosa okay and these are like see in very young people or young children right as you can see in this image also a child is infected from you know hex disease and in histopath slide you see an 
increased spinous cell layer that is called as acanthosis so we have like four cell layers in your epithelium that is your your corneum layer spinosum granulosum uh, and your basal so particularly your spinous cell layer increases in size in your hex disease and that is known as acanthosis so acanthosis is what is seen in your histopath slide of your um hex disease and other than that we see some virally altered cells which are known as coelocytes also in this histopath slide of this disease of this condition okay right so these were the two conditions of the develop these were two disturbances of the oral mucosa okay now let us move forwards towards the developmental disturbance of the gingiva so again gingiva we have for gingiva we have again two conditions which is uh, fibromatosis gingivae and your retrocuspid papilla so for these uh, you will see these in detail in your perio class but since you know the image based questions are uh, mainly picked from here so image is important okay so your fibromatosis gingivae something it looks something like this you know some it causes some mal positions of the teeth and it is you know very fibrous overgrowth of the gingiva right and it is also a developmental disturbance it happens in your intrauterine life okay and other than that secondly you have your retrocuspid papilla so these are something like these round round structures protruding from your Uh, from the lingual aspect of your lower canines mandibular canines so that is and in fact the name of this condition that is retrocuspid papilla it, all, it also defines that what it is right so retrocuspid meaning uh, behind the canines so it pres uh, presents itself at the lingual aspect of the canines both the sides these ling uh, these protuberances are known as retrocuspid papilla so that was easy uh ginger uh, about the gingiva now let us move towards the developmental disturbance of the tongue very important so we have around 10 uh, disturbances of the tongue starting with microglossia that is smaller tongue macro meaning larger ankyloglossia that is your tongue tie right and your cleft tongue fissured tongue median rhomboid glossitis benign migratory glossitis hairy tongue lingual varices and your lingual thyroid nodules so let us see all of these one by one so we are studying what uh, developmental disturbances of the tongue right so the first condition here is your aglossia or the microglossia a glossia meaning there is no tongue the tongue have not developed at all okay and in microglossia the tongue is very very small so as you can see in this image the tongue is very small okay now it can be either true or relative again i just just like i've told about the jaws that jaws you know micrognathia macrognathia can be true or relative that meaning that actually if the size of the tongue is small actually then that would be called as a true microglossia and if the jaw size is large but the tongue size is normal but it is giving an appearance like you know the tongue is small just because the jaw is relatively larger so that would be a relative microglossia now the second uh, disturbance of the tongue is your macroglossia so macroglossia that is your large large tongue okay it it is also known as your tongue hypertrophy hypertrophy we already know what it is that size is uh, you know large size increases so that is your hypertrophy okay so your macroglossia can be either congenital and or acquired so congenital meaning that is present by birth okay and 
it is mainly associated with your two syndromes that is your down syndrome and your back with wedman syndrome so in down syndrome also for example this image this child is suffering from your down syndrome so you can see the macro glossia here right the tongue is very large and you know his mouth is uh, you know whole blocked by the tongue so that is your down syndrome okay and the second is your back with weidman syndrome so what happens in back with weidman syndrome is you have a triad kind of thing that you have three things macrosomia macroglossia and your organomegaly so here i have a, i've chosen a pic of a child or of a fetus with you know uh, of a child with back with weidman syndrome so he is suffering basically from these three things macrosomia what is macrosomia macrosomia meaning that the size of the fetus is large large size of fetus and macroglossia you already know that the tongue tongue is very large and the organomegaly also is present in this syndrome that the organs are also large in size okay and along with your congenital conditions we have acquired conditions as well so acquired may be are like lymphangioma so in this lymphangioma what is what is lymphangioma it's a tumor right so in this your tongue is mainly infected and here in this image you can see the lymphangioma of the tongue right and other than that we have conditions like acromegaly you know due to your increased growth hormone we have also seen an uh, acromegaly in your macrognathia it also uh, causes macrognathia right it is seen in adults basically and your myxedema myxedema is basically hypothyroidism in that condition also you see your uh, macroglossia and other than that amyloidosis and angioedema also presents with this condition okay now the next that is third condition third disturbance of the tongue would be ankyloglossia this is very famously called as your tongue tie so what happens in this is that your tongue is you know tied to your uh, floor of the mouth so basically we have a lingual frenum here so if the lingual frenum is short and it is actually seen it is seen through your eye that you know the lingual frenum is short then that tongue tie would be called as partial and in complete you won't be able to see the lingual frenum only the tongue tip would be totally you know lying on the floor of the mouth and the child is not like able to speak or any, uh, speak anything right the uh, mispronunciation on all those problems right so for that you have a surgery called as phrenectomy the treatment of this condition is your phrenectomy and in child in children uh, we called this procedure as phrenectomy okay so phrenectomy and phrenectomy so that is the difference but you know the by surgical uh, removal of these this lingual frenum the tongue is set free right now the next condition is your bifid tongue bifid tongue so as you can imagine that here the tongue is bifid that is there is a cleft present in between the tongue so why does this happen is because you have two lateral lingual swellings here which you know couldn't fuse together so so these since it couldn't fuse together there is a cleft present in between those in between the tongue right so it is also associated with your orofacial digital syndrome now we are moving towards your fifth one that is your fissured or uh, scrotal tongue or it is also known as your lingua plicata so this these fissures you can see in the tongue also known as your scrotal tongue this condition is associated with some syndromes like your malcolm rosenthal syndrome 
So we had seen uh, this this syndrome, right? Mischel Milker syndrome and the syndrome in when we were reading about arthritis granulomatosa. In that, I told you that you know this condition, this syndrome also involves your facial palsy and your fissured tongue, along with your colitis granulomatosa. So this is your Milgerson Rosenthal syndrome. So this has your fissured tongue. Other than this, we also have fissured tongue in Down syndrome. So we had seen that Down syndrome has your macroglossia. Macroglossia is also present here and we also have something known as fissured tongue in Down syndrome. And then the third condition associated with your fissured tongue is your benign migratory glossitis. We are going to see this in a while. Okay. Now histopath, if you see the histopath of this uh, fissured tongue, you will see that the lamina propria, that is your connective tissue. Right. So... Your connective tissue is increased in size. Right? And in this tongue also you can see that the filiform papillas are mainly lost. Do you not see any filiform papillas here? Okay? And the red apex, they also undergo hyperplasia. Okay? The increased number of red apex are there. And you know, these red apex, which you know, uh, uh, it lies here, the epithelium lies here and connective tissue lies here and you have hyperplasia of these red packs. Okay, and other than that, that you also have neutrophilic abscesses present in the epithelium. Now these abscesses are called as Monroe's abscess. Monroe's abscess. Okay, now these abscesses, neutrophilic abscesses are not just found in fissure tongue but they are also seen in your benign migratory glossitis. Okay, the next condition is your median rhomboid glossitis. What is median rhomboid glossitis? You have a basically a atrophied tongue. So you have something known as central papillary atrophy of the tongue and it is present medially and something some, somewhat rhomboid in shape okay and this is present anterior to your circumvallid papilla so you have something called as sulcus terminalis here and uh, anterior to sulcus terminalis you have circumvallid papilla and anterior to circumvallid papilla you have this lesion called as your median rhomboid glossitis. Now why this condition occurs is your lack of fusion of your lingual swellings. You, we have lingual swellings left and right here and in the center you have something called as tuberculum impar. Now these lingual swellings fail to fuse with this tuberculum impar and that is what which is leading to your median rhomboid glossitis. Now it is more common in male than the female. The ratio would is your 3 to 1. And this is very interestingly this is also called as a kissing lesion. Why? Because this same lesion is also found in on the palate. Because the tongue you know touches the palate again and again. So that is why this lesion it you know transmits to that palate also that is why this lesion is known as a kissing lesion and this is also associated with your candidiasis okay so this is all about median rhomboid glossitis moving to the next condition we have benign migratory glossitis that is very uh, very interestingly it is called as geographic tongue why, why, what is there, what is about geography in this condition is that this rash, you know, this serpiginous, why is this serpiginous? Because this is, you know, snake-like. These snake-like lines, white colored lines, these keep on changing their locations. This pattern keeps on changing. So that is why this condition is called as wandering rash or geographic tongue geography because th there is some pattern to it okay 
and it keeps on wandering around the tongue it keeps uh, this pattern keeps on changing and it also histopathic uh, if you see the histopath now so that this lesion is very similar to your psoriasis so that is why it is called also called as your psoriasiform mucositis of the tongue why because histopathologically it is very similar to your psoriasis which is you know skin infection so that is this is that is why it is also known as your psoriasiform mucositis and these serpiginous uh, white lines are formed due to keratosis keratosis that there is a lot of keratin accumulation on the top of the tongue here okay and it is also associated with your candida alvega that is your candidiasis so this condition is often you know a lot uh, present together with candidiasis so this is your benign migratory glossitis or the geographic tongue okay and the moving towards the next condition we have hairy tongue so hairy tongue it, it also it is also known as your lingua villosa or the lingua nigra so what is hairy tongue actually why is it you know look like there are like black colored hairs hair coming out from the tongue why why is it looking like that so basically what happens is your filiform papilla these are the filiform papilla they are you know increasing in size the size is increasing and there is a lot of keratin deposition on the top of it and when the size increases beyond your 15 centi- mm then this is this condition is no, called as hairy tongue and this black col- color comes from your antibiotic consumption for example penicillin uh, matlab especially penicillin is what is causing this black coloration discoloration and along with that we, uh, you can have smoking smoking also causes this black discoloration of these filiform papilla enlarged increased in size filiform papilla and this is also associated with your candidiasis most of the conditions are also associated with candidiasis candida albicans infection that is your fungal infection okay now the ninth condition is your lingual varices just one more condition we are, we are having other after this lingual varices and your lingual thyroid nodule and will done with the developmental symptoms of the tongue so your lingual varices that is your also known as your varicosity so we you must have heard about varicose veins right so this is somewhat similar to varicose veins only but what happens in this is your veins veins become very tortuous and dilated and why is this happening is because the hydrostatic pressure is increasing very much in these veins and this is particularly happening in your, in your ventral ventral surface of the tongue so this is your ventral surface and th- on this surface you are seeing this um, you know lingual varices okay so this image based questions you should be you know very uh, fluent about you should be knowing that you know this what is this image this is not ranula this is not any uh, mucosal this is lingual varices okay because this is seen in your ventral surface of the tongue not floor of mouth right so the next and the last condition is your lingual thyroid nodules so by the name you can only understand that you know the thyroid tissue is going to be seen in your on your lingual uh, that is your tongue on the dorsal surface of the tongue something some nodular thyroid structure is seen and why is it seen because you know thyroid failed to migrate to its original or its normal position of the thyroid in the thorax right so it failed to migrate in the your intrauterine life so that is why your thyroid tissue is present posterior to your sulcus terminalis okay now this thyroid tissue should be should only be removed only be removed if your normal normal thyroid is present so normal if the thyroid gland is present normally in your thorax then this tissue can be removed but if 
this is the only thyroid tissue present in the body then you can you cannot you know afford to remove this the only thyroid tissue you have right so in that case you can what you can do is you can give some thyroid supplements you know the uh, what would these supplements do is these would uh you know the these would this is a overgrowth of thyroid tissue happening here right so these supplements would provide for the necessary thyroid uh, you know hormone which is required in the body and so the overgrowth won't happen right and this tissue will suppress or decrease in size size on its own it it will regress by this thyroid supplement therapy okay so this was about that we had seen about the developmental disturbance of oral mucosa gingiva and tongue and in the next part we are going to see about the developmental disturbance of the salivary glands and much much more so i'll see you in the next part thank you and keep studying subscribe the channel